this board is out of an ABB industrial robot and it's one of the uh, Axis servo drive boards and uh, depending on the configurations there's at least six of them all in a card cage sideways like this they all have similar connectors one for uh, power to the three phases and the other, other one for uh, DC bus input controls uh, and fault signals and uh, I fixed some of these before they're all fairly similar uh, this one is for one of the the lighter motors so it only has uh, one IGBT per phase so three for the high side three for the low side and this oddball here is a thermostat um, the other interesting things are two um, current sense transformers and on the back side well first of all no silk screen <laughs> no, no labels of any kind so they're not really meant to be uh, uh, repaired on, at the component level um, so on the left side there's the uh, control section and it's mostly analog parts uh, lots of 4000 logic series also and I'm not exactly sure what uh, strategy they use for uh, control feed uh, for current feedback <clears throat> but at least the lower part is fairly self-explanatory um, from this part here to the uh, the IGPTs so on this row there's the three low side switches and the way I can tell is well first of all I reverse engineer some of it and the control signals are directly connected to the control circuits without any isolation whereas the high level drivers well they're a bit more complex uh, because they're driven uh, through these um, pulse transformers and each pulse transformer has uh, two push-pull drivers here operated with by the uh, a bunch of logic here and right from this point on all the way to the top I don't really know what's going on here and those that I fixed in the past had problems either the low side driver circuits some of them had IGBT, bad IGBTs but more commonly uh, the pulse drivers either uh, shorted push-pull stages with a dead um, driver IC here either as the cause or consequence of the shorted transistor I luckily never um, never blew a transformer uh, they get real warm when the push-pull stage is sorted but apparently not long enough uh, to cause damage. Part of the reason is when, as soon as they have a problem of course the robot uh, disengages and um, falls into a fault mode so for this board the fault was a low current fault I prefer that to the, the opposite the high current fault which usually mean a short or something bad in the control circuit so um, low drive current means maybe an open IGBT or more likely something busted in the, in the gate drivers or maybe something higher up so the first thing I'll do is uh, do the easy stuff so check the IGBTs for shorts or opens um, the nice thing about having three phases is it makes it easier to compare readings so um, gate resistance all that kind of stuff and I'll move on to the high side drivers I'll check the transformers to make sure they're not busted and then uh, if I still haven't found anything I'll have to start digging deeper I'll pull out some of the schematics I drew last time I was in here and I'll check some of the diodes uh, I'll probably focus on this section I'm just about to power up again I was going to do it on camera but I chickened out I wanted to be able to react fast if something bad happened uh, so I'm applying 15 volts to the uh, high voltage negative of the whole board which is also the digital ground and also plus 15 volts as I understand it, uh, it's powered from high voltage DC and a plus and minus 15 volt supplies, as far as I can tell. And the whole thing is drawing about, let me just turn this on, about 80 milliamps on the 15 volt, on the plus 15 volt rail. And um, the first thing I checked was a uh, well, current draw, then the pulse transformers, just putting my fingers underneath. Uh, last time I had one of the drivers go bad, one of them, one of them got hot pretty fast. So this isn't the case. So the other thing I did was <clears throat> uh, probe around part of the logic with uh, 5 volt parts because there is a 5 volt regulator and that was fine too. 
Um, next thing I did was uh, power up the scope and I'll um, probe around near the pulse transformers because I really want to see those uh, those pulse trains there. So now looking at the scope I'll just probe again um, right on the transformer pins. So it's a simple coil um, with both ends driven by a push pull stage. So on one end I got this. Uh, the setting is about 5 volts per vertical div and uh, 1 microsecond per horizontal. So uh, the, one of the sides is uh, idling at about 13 volts, the other side is toggling, just zoom in a bit, at uh, 3 microseconds, so that's what, 300 kilohertz? Doesn't matter. I got something here, so that's good. The next transformer uh, has the same thing as I can, as far as I can tell. Yep, same frequency. Just pulsing the transformer, and uh, from the schematics I drew, what this seems to be doing is when it's idling, it's just pulsing the transformer in one direction, and that's on the secondary side. It's being rectified and filtered to uh, power up the um, 4001 IC. There, it's just some logic to do the the gate drive. And the final transformer now is driven in the opposite direction as the previous two. I think the transformers are fine, the push pulls are probably fine. Next thing I want to look at is, I might be pushing my luck here with the zoom, but I'll try anyway. So we're phase two here. Um, the gate signal is this one here through the 4.7 four ohm resistor and the farad, farad bead. And there's nothing there, 0 volts, this one is 0. Ah, this one is dri driven high. How high? About 15 volts. Um, 15 there, so... Oh, sorry about that. So this phase is conducting on the high side, because I see 15 volts on the gate. This one is not driven, because it's at zero. This one is also at zero. I'll move to the low side now. Uh, again, apologies for the, <laughs> the green ink. Um, this is part of the high side uh, drive schematic that I drew. Setting with the IGBTs here. Well, they're only single on this model, but the other one I worked on was uh, uh, two transistors per phase. And um, the gate is driven through all the stuff by a push pull stage. And um, two inverters here. And then this thing that looks like it needs to be redrawn. Um, I think. Um, there's a time constant here. What it looks like in conjunction with this, and from what I would remember, is it only drives the gate uh, by pulses uh, due to this arrangement with uh, the feedback. Uh, as you get pulses here, it only gives a very short pulse, and this looks like it stretches the pulse. I'm working from memory here, and I have nothing to, <laughs> to support my claims. This is just what I, I think I observed on the previous boards. and. Uh, Nice! Test point one with a typical waveform. I forgot I could check those. I got a bunch of other test points I documented, so I'll check those. And um, what I can do for a test then, since I got a 1K resistor here, I can hook up after the resistor and clamp this to a ground or positive uh, within the high side driver, and I force I can force the push-pull driver to one state or the other, because otherwise if I had to move up and uh, there's the whole pulse train coming out of the, the transformer here, the two coils. I gotta mess around with this, with this mess. Um, so yeah, this is where I'm gonna hook up. Actually, I changed my mind. Before I uh, get super deep in the high side drivers, I thought I'd check the low sides. Um, so the first thing I did was over here. Oh, let me see. So, 
these are the three control signals for the three phases and I compare the readings so on one of them here I got uh, 13 volts okay fine second here I got four uh, three volts and this one I have zero so this is not at all what I expect I expect like maybe one high and two the, the two others low or all three the same but not like a a half ground here, a middle ground. So I moved up. These traces go here to these resistors, and um, on the, on the input side of the res resistors, I have about the same situation. Like this one is at zero, this one is sitting at four, and this one is at thirteen. And these, in turn, come from uh, one of these. Sorry about that. Um, so these are the three uh, low side drivers I was looking at, and there's these three series resistors. So what I'm going to do is first uh, measure the current, the voltage drop across each of these to see if uh, one of them is drawing a whole lot of current, which isn't really normal in steady state. And then I might uh, remove all these three and try and see if it's IC6 that has uh, dead outputs, or if there's something in the low side drivers that's uh, shorted to ground or something that's uh, drawing too much current out of the outputs. So these are the 680 ohm resistors across this one I've got, hold on, zero, that's all good, zero on this one, and a point 0.1 on this one. So. They're not drawing a whole lot of current. Uh, let me just double check again. On the input they have 0 volts, 0 0.6, and 14. What do you mean 0 0.6? That's weird. How was I seeing 4 volts with the scope? Hold on. This one says 0, this one says... Cool. It says one volt now. There's uh, something going on with the middle resistor here. And it's probably upstream, so that means it's probably one of these ICs. Uh, this one here is a 4502. I think it's just an inverter. Uh, yeah, it looks like an inverter, so I'll try and mess around with this. It might be dead. That'd be a cool fix. Just replace this one thing and the whole thing works again. We'll see. I was just looking up some data sheets online, and uh, as luck would have it, the 4502 is uh, not just a regular hex inverter, it's a strobed hex inverter, so it has an inhibit output, uh, sorry, an inhibit input and an output disable. But luckily for us, uh, let me see here, <laughs> thanks to my schematics, I know that the, uh, the inhibit is used but not the output enable. The output enable um, uh, makes the output high impedance. If we look at, if we take a look at the truth table here, uh, we can ignore the output disable column since it's tied to ground. Uh, the outputs are always enabled, uh, so the two inputs then become uh, the data input or the, um, the inverting input and the inhibit input. And if you take a look at the truth table here and you imagine the fourth line for uh, both inputs high and the outputs in a, a zero it looks an awful lot like a NOR gate and lucky for me I have a 4001 quad NOR gate so I'll hook up one input to the uh, inhibit signal and the other one to the data in and that should probably be a good replacement at least for a test scope going. So I'll check those uh, three uh, low side signals again. So number three is normal, number two <laughs> still nothing, and number one is good. Yeah. And on the input of my patch, uh, yeah I guess I have the input there. Before I continue, I need to finish embarrassing myself and teach myself again how a NOR gate works, because apparently I forgot. 
So with the A and B input signals, with the A I'll call it inhibit for now, an OR gate gives a 0, a 1, then a 1, and a 1. An OR gate is the logical opposite. So that if I have a 1 on the inhibit line, no matter what happens on B, like for instance a pulse signal, of course the output's going to be stuck at 0. So that first 4001 ice crap was probably still good. This one's still good too. So I'm thinking maybe uh, it's the 4502 that has a bad inhibit line. That's actually not inhibiting anything, so that's why I'm seeing a pulse train on the outputs there. Probably.